Good day, folks. Greetings from Fox Trap on the island of Newfoundland. We'll look at some uh, basic types of antenna tuners. Uh, the three basic types, and there's variations on those as well. Three basic types would be the Pi, the L, and the T network. I have a little example here of a Pi network built a few years ago. Your two uh, connections here for your coax in from your antenna out to your rig. A couple of capacitors, and it has three fixed inductors. Just made uh, from scrap parts, some rubber feet on it from an old stereo. Knobs from a stereo. Salvage capacitors and uh, hand wound coils. Not much to it. So part of one piece was cut, so one piece fits into the other. And uh, the Pi network, relatively simple. It's called a Pi network because it's laid out like the Greek letter Pi, as does not refer to the numerical value at all. And uh, this is the actual schematic for this uh, little uh, little tuner with the three fixed inductors. Generally, a Pi network would have a switched or roller inductor. So it's just in from your antenna, bypass a capacitor to ground, in through your inductor bypass another capacitor to ground and then coax connector out to your rig. Relatively simple. Now if you took uh, the Pi network and removed one of the capacitors you'd have an L network which is a very simple schematic, probably the simplest of the antenna tuners. And the L network is just this cookie can, which you may have seen this in another video. The cookie can has uh, binding posts here for the uh, balance line connection. So your balance line comes in, goes through the balancing uh, transformer, bypass the capacitor to ground, and then straight through the inductor and out through a coax connector out to the rig. And you can see that here in this schematic, in through uh, with your balance line on your binding post, through the uh, balancing transformer, also known as a choke balance, or in some cases known as a current balance as well. Is designed to balance and eliminate any common mode currents. So you see it's very simple in bypass your variable capacitor to ground, in through the roller inductor, through the coax connector, and out to your rig. Another little experimental cookie can. I don't know if it's a cookie can or a candy can. It's a very similar, a little bit smaller. It's one I've been experimenting with. Tried it in a couple of different configurations, tried it in the Pi network. And the next adventure is going to be with the T-Network. I'm planning on putting in a balance line. I've added uh, binding posts to this after the fact. And I'm uh, going to wire in this little balancing transformer so I could use it with a balance line. Just a couple of capacitors and uh, a coil, connectors, a couple of knobs on the front for controls, and a couple of rubber feet on the bottom give it some stability and that's a T network T network is uh, probably the most common of all of them there's a couple other different ways you can uh, do the L network as well the L network uh, the simplest of all is just two components so you get in from your uh, antenna through your coil bypass capacitor to ground and then out to your rig or you can come in straight through your coil have the end of the coil grounded and then through a capacitor to your rig. And of course these would also be, this is like the cookie can, this one in, bypass capacitor to ground, through the inductor and onto your rig. And there's another way you can do it, in from the antenna, by, bypass uh, the uh, coil down to co down the ground and then through a capacitor to your rig on the incoming end. So there's a couple of different ways you can configure the L network too. Now the T-Network is the most common. You're going to see that in most of the commercially made ones. And it's also very simple. It's called a T-Network because it's laid out like the letter T. In the schematic uh, representation of it. In from your antenna to your coax connector. By the uh, right straight through a capacitor. Bypass your inductor to ground. And this is generally either switched or roller inductor. And then through another capacitor, through a connect connector and out to the rig. So the T-Network is the one you're going to encounter the most, um, or the most that I've seen anyway. 
This is another uh, little tea network. It was actually uh, a Johnson Messenger in its former life. And uh, I just used a case and built a little tea network into it. So it's in from your antenna, bypass straight through the capacitor, bypass your coil to ground on your different switched uh, uh, points, and then through another capacitor and on out to the rig. And uh, this little guy here, this one, uh, the first, the very first time, tried to build an antenna tuner. <laughs> and it was all just made out of scraps of aluminum and pop rivets, putting it together, and you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's a simple T network in from the antenna through the capacitor, bypass your coil to ground through another capacitor, and then I have T rig. So the T network, like I say, probably the most common that you're going to encounter. Very simple circuit. None of these are, are very complicated, certainly. This is a little T network here. Now, this is a factory made device. The manufacturer claims that this will do peak 200 watts. Eh, realistic, probably about 100. So, the same thing T network, put your capacitor in, bypass your coil, you're switched uh, on, your, on, your, on your position, and out through your pass it around to the antenna. Um, this little uh, device here is the balancing transformer. Now what I've done on your connections here, first when they come in, two of them go right to ground and then you're supposed to put a jumper, a little jumper wire they claim from one to the other. It's a jumper and that's how you connect. And what I've done I've disconnected one of those and connected it right to here. So instead of having it configured this way, this is the way it comes from the factory. Your balance line connection is here. Both of those come in, go right directly to ground, and then they recommend you put a jumper from here onto the input of the antenna. So what I've done with these, this one and these here as well, I've also modified this the same way. So it becomes from a voltage balance to a current balance or choke balance. So initially, it's this way. Two balance line connections, direct to ground, and then a jumper. What I've done is removed one of those here from the ground and put that to tuner in for your antenna coming in. And I'm using the 600 ohm. This is generally designed for a lower impedance line. So for 600 ohm, I've used that mod. So one side of your ladder line comes in through your balancing transformer on the ground. The other side, right directly on in through your T-network. So this type is called a voltage balance, and this type is known as a current balance, also sometimes known as a choke balance. And for parallel lines, there's some spacings. Number 12, I use 6 inch. 14 wire, I use 5 inch. I don't know if I'd go any smaller than that here in Newfoundland with the wind that we have. It uh, it probably wouldn't last long. Although if you want to use a 16, it's about a 4 inch spacing. Uh, the larger type tuners, interesting note, this, uh, this guy factory made here, um, this is designed for a lot of power. And it's interesting to note that the balancing transformer certainly is quite larger to be able to handle a fair bit of power, although it's not a real large wire they got put onto it. But the interesting note on this is that from the factory, balance line comes in through your transformer, and then there's no, there's only one side of it grounded. It's black wire down here that goes to the ground, and the other one goes to here, and then the jumper, and then straight in. So this is already comes from the factory, wired in the current balance connect type uh, connections. So it's an interesting note that the higher power tuners from the manufacturers are wired with a current balance, whereas the lower power, this one here is supposedly good for 300, so they claim anyway, supposedly rated at high peak at 300 watts. Anyway, interesting to note that these were also wired in the voltage configuration, this one and this one as well, and I've changed them. I just have uh, your, your two connections come in on your balance line, balance line. One goes directly to ground, but the other one goes right directly to the antenna in. 
so it's wired the same way I've done this. Now these little guys, these little Torites, I salvaged these from old computer power supplies. Inside old computer power supplies you'll find these windings and these toroid co coils. And I just uh, removed the wire and then do my own uh, winding on them. You two turn two uh, you got a parallel run each in and out. And that's your uh, current balance. Like I say that will uh, eliminate or mostly eliminate common mode currents and help to balance the signal going out from your rig to your antenna. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Just uh, a few little uh, looks at the basic types of tuners. Some of the ones I've built over the years. Old, uh, the first one, <laughs> a bit, bit rough, but uh, hey, we all got to start somewhere. You may find it inspiring, who knows, you may want to uh, get a cookie can and uh, or some other sort of a box and build your own. There's not a whole lot to it, as you can see. They're very, very, very basic circuits. We have another look again, the Pi circuit, the L network, simplest of all, two components, one inductor and one capacitor. So it's it's the simplest probably the simplest tuner you could ever build, and even the T network it's not really uh, a difficult uh, circuit to understand. In from your antenna, through a capacitor, bypass your switch coil to ground for your inductance, and uh, through another capacitor and up to your rig. So, you know, uh, no mystery, no real mystery to any of this stuff. You know, uh, anybody at all uh, with a few parts, a little bit of wire. And a soldering arm can be quite dangerous indeed. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.